<clears throat> check, check. I see it. I see him moving. All right. Hey everyone, my name is Ben Chaish, and today I am sort of concluding a small series that I've been doing where I'm going through a particular camera manufacturer and building out a kit in a about $10,000 budget. Moving into 2022, there are just so many good options out there for wedding photographers. And while $10,000 is, is a lot of money, to get a full set of tools for your job that could potentially make you hundreds of thousands of dollars is is a pretty decent investment there. Currently, I've gone through Canon, Sony, Fujifilm, and we are ending with Leica. I shoot with the Leica M10s, and obviously, uh, for anybody who knows anything about Leica, those uh, don't exactly have a reputation of being inexpensive, but they partnered with Sigma and Panasonic to make the L-Mount Alliance, and their SL2 system, specifically the SL2S, uh, as well as the Q2, have been super popular cameras for a lot of people who may want something like a Leica, but they don't necessarily want to use a rangefinder. I forgot to actually mention this, but I would love to see your picks as well. So either at the end of this video, after you've seen what I'm looking at, or you can do it right now, go and do this challenge on your own. And I would love to see what your kit would be. So drop that in the comments below. And then I'm gonna do another video sort of highlighting the best kits and maybe even improving mine by adding yours. And I definitely don't have a giveaway or anything for you, but I think this would be super interesting and kind of whatever our finalized kits will be, we'll put up next to each other in a kind of final video. And if you are a fanboy or girl or whatever of any specific brand, making the best possible kit would be great because we're gonna put them all together in one sort of finalized video and see what we would consider the best value overall to be between all the brands. I'm just doing this based off of what I'm currently looking at right now. So if prices are different, you can definitely check that out. And I mean, I guess if you really wanted to, you could kind of cheat this video and just look at the description and then you'd see what I'm thinking about. But then you wouldn't hear all my thoughts. So what fun would that be? And while this video isn't sponsored, everything that I will go over today will be linked down in the description below. So you can check it out on Amazon and B&H and Moment and all that kind of stuff. And then I also wanted to take a quick second to plug my Patreon. I do multiple videos like this a month that are much more tutorial based and aimed at improving your photography and usually much less about gear. But I'll definitely leave a link in the description about that as well as my Cascade presets. If you are looking for a great preset pack that works on just about every camera manufacturer there is, I'll obviously leave a link to those in the description and would be happy to answer any questions you might have about them. So in keeping with the rest of the series, I wanted to see if I could build a wedding photography kit that includes two professional bodies, and three lenses for under $10,000. So one of the prerequisites I'm making for a body in this series is since this is for wedding photography, it has to have dual card slots. Now the full frame interchangeable lens cameras within the Leica system that do this are the SL2S as well as the SL2. Now obviously the SL2 is $6,895 for body only. It's got a 47 megapixel sensor, but I mean, that's clearly well above our budget. And then the Leica SL2S, which has a 24.6 megapixel sensor, it's kind of more along the lines of the rest of the cameras that we've been mostly picking in this series. That camera comes in at $4,995, which since we have to buy two of them, leaves us with $10 to buy three lenses. So if you thought you were going to uh, get into this video and think, oh, Ben is somehow magically gonna find a way to buy a brand new Leica wedding kit for under $10,000. It's not gonna happen. Leica just isn't that way. I mean, again, I've bought all of my Leica stuff secondhand. Every every cam that I see in here, I purchased secondhand. That being said, I still am curious what building out a Leica kit would be like, especially since we have access to like the Panasonic lenses and the Sigma lenses. So let's just build it out and see kind of where we land and see honestly if it is a kind of justifiable thing 
to jump into something like the SL2S. But we are going to stick with the lenses that are in that L mount alliance. So Sigma, Panasonic, and Leica. And for my particular brand of wedding photography, I have been using all prime lenses. So that's the other direction we're going to go in. Let's just see kind of where we would be landing if we went in the Leica route. So our options for a Leica wide angle, which for me in a kit like this is a 24, a 28, or a 35. I feel like anything wider than 24 is a little too exaggerated for a basic kit like this. And then anything longer than a 35 just isn't gonna be able to capture the whole feel of everything. Leica currently makes a 28 F2 and a 35 F2. Both of these are incredible lenses absolutely incredible. They are better than anything that I have in my Leica M-mount stuff. They're next level. But the Leica Apo Summicron SL 28mm f2 spherical lens is $5,195 and the Apo Summicron SL 35 f2 spherical lens is also $5,195. And so even buying just a single SL2S and then a Leica either 28 or 35 is already gonna put us over the budget. And we're gonna have some issues here. Just for that sake, obviously we're not gonna go in that direction, but we can move down into maybe the, some of the Sigma and Panasonic lenses and get something that's pretty comparable. Okay, so we could either go with the Sigma 35 1.4 at $899, which is completely reasonable, or Probably my personal favorite out of this would be the 28 1.4. That lens comes in at $13.99. So we're gonna go with the Sigma 28 1.4 Art. And that is in a native L mount lens. And technically it's a native lens to the system as well. So it technically is part of the format. And then for a standard lens, most likely, typically that for me is a 50, a 55, a 58, something like that. So let's jump in here and see what is available as kind of like a standard lens in the L mount system. So let's see what Leica's versions would be just for the fun of it. The Leica Sumalux SL 51.4, is $5,995 currently, obviously well out of our budget. And then the Apo Summicron 50 F2, which might be their best lens or might be the best lens ever made. It is again, $5,095. So those are also going to be clearly far out of our budget. That being said, I have actually heard really good things about this Panasonic Lumix S Pro 51.4. It's not going to be the Sumalux at $6,000, but it does come in at a more reasonable $2,297.99. We've spent that uh, throughout the series on other things. It's a great lens for weddings, so I'm gonna go with the Panasonic Lumix S Pro 51.4. And then finally, we're gonna jump into kind of like the medium telephoto. That for me is 75 at the very widest, 85, 90, 105, 135 at the far end, but I've been usually sticking with 85, so let's kind of see what Leica has available in their lens setup. Like I was saying, 75 is kind of like the, the short end. It's almost into standard, but it could work as a telephoto if, if you needed it to. That lens is $5,395. And then the 90 mil version of that same lens in that same series is $5,795. I mean, obviously well out of our price range for something like this. So we're gonna go with the Sigma 85 1.4 at $1,199. If we add that up in our cart, let's see where we are landing here. So I was, <laughs> I was ready for a shock here because when I first pulled up the page here, it said $9,890.99. And I was like, oh my gosh, we did it. We somehow made a kit under $10,000. But then I realized I only added one SL2S body. So let's update that to two bodies. So to get into the SL system with the SL2S and get into the whole Leica ecosystem here in particular, the, the problem sort of is in a budget-minded setup, at least, is that each body is about double what the other more comparable bodies are in this setup. 
Not to say it's not worth it. The SL2S has a lot of great features. It's a really cool body. You know, like the R6 is about $2,500 and then the SL2S is $5,000. In this kit, if we did this setup with two SL2S bodies, a Sigma 28 1.4 Art, the Panasonic Lumix S Pro 51.4, and the Sigma 85 1.4 Art, our grand total would be $14,885. So we're, you know, about almost $5,000 over budget. But who said that buying a Leica was gonna be, uh, you know, cost effective? And we couldn't go all this way and consider getting into the Leica ecosystem without seeing what an actual Leica kit would cost instead. So I'm gonna build that kit real quick and we can have fun with what uh, ends up coming out of this. So before I jump into this, because I have now seen the final number, I will say that I have some friends that are using the SL2S system and they are legitimately just loving everything that's coming out of these images. They're spending way less time on editing because there's such little chromatic aberration, all sorts of stuff. So while this is going to be a more expensive option here, there are definitely some reasons why if this is your full-time gig like it is for me, you could find a way to justify this for sure. All right, so using all Leica glass along with the SL2S, we're gonna go with the 28 Summicron, the 50 millimeter Summilux, and uh, let's go with the 90, because I feel like that's a better focal length than 75 for most things the 90 millimeter Summicron, and our grand total is, drum roll please, $26,975, which puts us $16,975 over budget. <laughs> but that being said, I mean, you're putting together one of the best possible wedding kits out there. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you have any suggestions for other things in this kit, let me know in the comments below. And then if you are interested in more videos like this, especially with the Canon system, the Fujifilm system, and the Sony system, you can click here or here or subscribe to the channel and find those videos elsewhere. So give the video a thumbs up if you made it this far, subscribe if you aren't already, and I will see you all in the next one.